There's my microphone. Good job. Representative, um, so I do agree that no one is forced to join a union. And you believe that paying fair share is should be taken away. But if you belong to a country club or a Y, you pay your dues and you're supplied with, with protection from that organization or, or items from that organization. So I don't understand the logic. I just don't understand the logic of it. And you know, in the 25 states that you were talking about, not one of those states passed this bill on a ballot measure. They were all passed in legislatures. And they were all similar. And, and, and your statistics still about the comparing, comparison between the right to work states and the states that don't have right to work is wrong. The, I don't know where you're getting your figures because I have figures from the Kaiser Family Foundation, the Economic Policy Institute, the uh, National Association of Ranking and Estimations, uh, Census Bureau, and these figures are, are, are devastating. I mean, I, it, it really scares me that Ohio will turn into Louisiana. Or, and if we're doing such a great job and the, and the governor is running for president on this, you know, talking about what a great job we're doing in this state, and there's been an obvious outcry from the, from the general public with Senate Bill 5. To turn it up, to turn it down. Why would we? Why would we want to go back on? Why would we want to take this away from working men and women? I can't see anything, but it's just an attack on working men and women. Uh, Chairman Young, Representative Forty. Well, um, first of all, I, I I might be wrong, but I can believe on the past on the ballot initiative. Um, so there is one state at least, and I put over the other ones. Uh, you know, I was a member of YMCA, and they uh, they decided to shut down one branch. <coughs> the other ones were inconvenient, so I left. I decided to do uh, uh, my fitness uh, elsewhere, um, hopefully in about three hours. And um, you know, you have a chance to vote on your feet, or you have a chance to pay to join other clubs, etc. Uh, but in the case of uh, current structure in Ohio, uh, the unions don't, in a closed shop, don't really have to do a great job. They don't really have to, uh, there's nothing that they're competing against. Where right to work would require them to work hard and earn your dues. Um, I think most Ohioans, most people, uh, like to reward hard work and like to reward uh, folks that are working for them, even if they're not 100% successful, uh, at least we know that they're at least trying. Uh, after all, we, we, we support a lot of women's sports teams in this state all the time, and we still go to their games, um, because we, uh, we want to see that they're working hard. And I think right to work will bring that necessary form of competitiveness and hard work uh, for the uh, unions in those currently closed shops. Um, to be more competitive and work for those folks so that, those, that people who are paying just fair share uh, will say, hey, they're doing a great job. I, I want to pay to be a part of that. Uh, so I don't think that's a downside because uh, going back to the sports teams, they're trying to be competitive. So are businesses. Um, uh, we had a choice today whether to go to Potbelly or the Zoo or uh, uh, Einstein's, and we chose, chose Potbelly for numerous reasons. But they're in a competitive work, workplace. And, uh, market where they're trying to get our business. And I think by adding that little bit of competitiveness for the unions to compete and do a good job for their membership, it isn't such a bad thing. Um, as far as statistics, um, I'm welcoming the having proponent testimony, uh, which will bring at that time a lot of statistics, a lot of information that shows the states that are right to work do have uh, many of the things uh, that have been said they don't, uh, but also Look at the track records of, of some of our recent additions to the right to work states like Michigan and Indiana. And I think you'd be surprised to see um, that they 
do have a lot of job growth, uh, that they haven't seen a decline of the union membership. Uh, in fact, the unions have become uh, better towards their memberships. And uh, you'd be surprised at that. And um, again, um, that is what is attracting a lot of jobs out of our state uh, here in the Midwest, and that's what I'm trying to uh, cease by the passage of this legislation. Very good. Um, I just want to caution the committee. Let's, I, it seems as if a lot of our questions are getting somewhat repetitive. We don't want to keep covering the same ground. I believe uh, there was one other question from Representative Schlesnick. Thank you, Chairman. Being repetitive, but it, it follows up with the previous questions. That it, um, you know, collective bargaining in the private sector is a contractual agreement. You know, it's a contractual matter. You have two private, it's two parties negotiating, negotiating what's best for that company. And Representative, I you know that uh, you've always been so for small government. Why do you believe that government should be able to intervene with these? Uh, Thank you, Chairman Young, uh, for this subject. I, I also believe in uh, freedom of choice, individual liberty, uh, individual rights, and I think that these workers who are uh, forced to be a part of a process that they may not want to be a part of uh, should have that right to choose. Um, and I think that the, adding the competitiveness uh, into, the, uh, into the mix uh, will actually um, bring are a stronger union uh, because the membership uh, will not be something that's forced to be paid. The people will look forward to paying because they're getting something out of it. Uh, so you're right, small government uh, intervening in a private contract uh, are uh, certainly uh, issues that have to be balanced. But overall, for me, it's the, the freedom of choice for the uh, workers that drive this. Very good. One more question, please, Representative Beck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, answering that question, think about your lives here. So, you believe taking away um, the voice of members of the union, the freedoms that they have, and the rights that they have without any governmental improvement, um, will make stronger unions in those states that have the right to work law in place would be stronger even though they make $535 less per month. That makes it stronger in it. Um, they have fewer health care benefits. Um, it makes it stronger in it because you then put in compromise you know, provisions on retirement
from family members and others that in closed shops, because the union does not have to compete, does not have to produce, does not have to perform, uh, yet remains the union, uh, the unit to bargain, uh, they can give shoddy service. They can give not really follow through <coughs> as they should. And uh, I think that by having a uh, right to work, where people have a choice whether to join or not, uh, the union would say, boy, we better get our act together, uh, provide better service for our membership in order to get them uh, to pay their dues. Like I said earlier, uh, I don't think Americans require you to be 100% successful in uh, winning every grievance that's filed or doing a perfect job for them, but they want to at least see you try. And um, I think that that's what will be uh, necessary for the unions in a new, new environment that right to work would break. I can't, um, when you went off on some other numbers, uh, Representative, I just don't have those uh, facts and statistics with me in front of me, but I think those will come out. We have one more question on 